what's up gamers your boy beast gamer kuma back again with another situation in the gaming industry that's right it ain't over yet we may have won one battle but the world continues because before i get into this i'm gonna hit you with the standard stuff hit that like and subscribe button hit that notification bell stay notified on more videos of video game playthroughs news reviews and other such but right now we're talking about microsoft it seems like industries out there are trying to one up each other because after dealing with the Sony situation over the weekend, Microsoft comes over here talking about, huh, or it feels like Sony went to them like, hey, we did something screwed up. It's your turn to do something screwed up. And they're getting rid of certain studios that made Dishonored, Hi Fi Rush, the Redfall, which I can understand, but still, uh, Apparently, statistically speaking, a lot of those companies didn't really do well sales-wise, which baffles me because I thought Dishonored series was highly respected. So was the Prey, the Prey reboot. Honestly, it wasn't my cup of tea because the Prey sequel from the OG days was more my cup of tea, and I was hoping that was coming out. But they rebooted the whole series, and but Hi-Fi Rush, out of all things, I thought that even did well, even though it was free on Game Pass, and they just shifted over to Sony. Same thing with Sea of Thieves, but the one thing I do agree out there is that Bethesda is not really much of a publisher. They are a development studio. So trying to go on this little, go on a big boy's table and being a publisher as well, closing down other studios is kind of weird to me, but this is the world we live in at the moment. I mean, like I said, Redfall kind of makes sense, but I haven't played since last year, and apparently they did beef up the game, make it better, but I feel like the damage was already done, but Hi-Fi Rush out of all things, that felt like a big winner to me, which is, again, we're still crazy on why this is happening. There's been a lot of shutdowns lately, a lot of layoffs that happened, especially in the beginning of the year, but it feels like that whole boom or crash that we had back in 1983 but that was because the et game happened and i've been talking with a whole bunch of friends about that that maybe that kind of devastation needs to happen to make these industries wake up a bit and see what the consumer actually really wants because yes there is massive burnout on all the bs microtransactions of the yahoo i mean look at ubisoft coming out with star wars outlaws which i was looking forward to is it outlaws or outcast the packaging for that game is bananas and even when you know i do agree with dragons like some people that have gripes of dragons dogma 2 it's a single player game with a lot of weird microtransactions going on within it so what is happening right now i don't i don't understand the decision making going on with the higher ups to say hey this is going to happen you need to get with the program and deal with it but like no we don't we really don't that's why Personally, I've been shifting gears and supporting the indie developers. And Star Wars Outlaws, it's like, yeah, you get your standard $70 game with pre-order bonus. Then it jumps up to $109 and then $129 for a weird Jabba the Hutt mission that, technically speaking, you already get to see Jabba the Hutt. Plus all that, you know, it's they keep on wrapping up all these additions with bells and whistles to make it sound sweet. Three days early access, season pass. I'm like, mm. so everybody's complaining about seventy dollar games, but I've said it for years that honestly, when the game industry shifted into the Xbox 360 and PS3 era, we were playing more than sixty dollars a game when season passes came out, especially when Call of Duty started dropping those season passes with the game which was an extra $49.99. So uh, on top of that $60, you're playing another $49.99 combined. So it's like we've been playing more than the standard version of games for years. And it's getting annoying, especially with these pre-order bonuses. They throw in a digital art book. I mean, most people are doing digital at the moment at the way, but digital art broke Rogue Infiltrator Bundle. And this is for Star Wars Outlaws. And I'm just like, ah. Uh kind of over it at this point where I just want the game to actually work and come on. That's another thing we always, we've lately been dealing with since the twenties 
drop. A lot of games are not done. They come out not cooked enough. So, this, oh boy, this is going to be a shift from the AAA companies to the more indie developers, which is technically happening because you get a bang for your buck, especially cheaper. Like I said, even Helldivers wasn't an expensive game, $40. Not too bad. Even though it's a live for service game, I think I only spent one time on credits and that was it, but other stuff I just unlocked, especially just playing the game. That I'm okay with. When a live for service live for service game is not greedy, I'm okay with it. But this is a whole weird beast going on because yes, Microsoft shutting down or Bethesda shutting down the studios makes me just wonder, okay, who's doing well and who's lying? Because Hi-Fi Rush was a big game that a lot of people enjoyed. And honestly, Dishonored and Dishonored 2, but apparently the sales wasn't there for those. I understood Deathloop didn't sell that well. Definitely Redfall didn't sell that well. But I'm just like, you still had three heavy hitters. That's why people was anticipating Redfall so much, because Dishonored did a great job. So I don't... Who's lying? That's what it feels like. There's a lot of lying, a lot of numbers being skewed. What's going on? But that's what's big going on right now. And it's, oh boy. But I guess I want to end on a lighter note, to be honest, because, yeah, between those two situations, victory becomes another weird defeat. I want to say if it's a defeat, because if they didn't make that much money, then it's not really much of a defeat. So the biggest news that also came out today was the Nintendo Switch 2 has been confirmed by Nintendo, which is long overdue, but take what you get. Uh, we got a Twitter account from Nintendo Co. overseas saying, this is Furukawa, president of Nintendo. We will make an announcement about the successor to the Nintendo Switch within this fiscal year. It will have been over nine years since we announced the existence of a Nintendo Switch back in March 2015, holding a Nintendo Direct. So it is confirmed that the Nintendo Switch 2 is dropping. We're going to get an announcement, and that's actually pretty cool. So I guess that's a lighter note to what's going on, but we'll see when that happens on the next Nintendo Direct on when that's going to happen. Probably during the, hopefully the Summer Game Fest this year. Hopefully I'll get to stream that as well. But other than that, that is your tidbit of news for the moment. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below about what's going on lately. How do you feel? What are you thinking? And share your thoughts. Comment. I mean, let's talk about this. Other than that, I hope you all have a great evening. Be well. This will probably be, you, by the time you probably see this, it be Wednesday. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time. As always, peace out.